tell you how police chased down a dangerous wanted suspect on the city's east side and another suspect identified in connection with this terror week's terror attack in Brussels. KCCI 8 News at Noon is coming up next. The most watched news at noon in central Iowa. This is Iowa's news leader. This is KCCI 8 News at Noon. And right now at noon, winter rears its ugly head once more. Several inches of snow continue to hamper travel in parts of Iowa this afternoon, especially around Sioux City, where 14 inches of snow has fallen. Also, snow covered some stretches of Interstate 35 this morning. This video was taken by our KCCI managing editor, Tom Torkby, as he was making his way southbound on Interstate 35 in Story County. And tow trucks will be busy this afternoon. Several cars reported in the ditches along Interstate 35, especially north of Ames. Here is the latest look at road conditions at 511ia.org. As you can see, things have improved greatly as the front has moved out out of the state, but hazardous road conditions remain in the very far northwestern portion of the state. So let's check in now with Jason because we knew that winter wasn't done with us quite yet, Jason. Oh, it sure felt like it though. I mean, we started spring and we had spring like air and then bam, some of us saw almost a foot and a half of snow just south of Sioux City. They caught 17 inches, Algona saw 11 and Sergeant Bluffs on 9.4. So buried to the north, not so much to the south. You look up at Algona right now, and they have got snow mounds on the sides of the roads that are up to the windows on the cars. So thankfully, roads looking clear down there. They've got a little bit of sunshine. You can see that system continues eastward, and as it does, just ragged stuff behind it. And you can even see the cloud line back here. So eventually, by tomorrow, we'll bring in a little bit of sunshine. But for today, likely staying cloudy. Chills sticking in the mid-20s as we keep that wind alive. Coming up here, though, I'll show you when that dies down, and we'll have a look at your Easter weekend coming up soon. Well, even more severe weather hammered the south overnight. Hail and thunderstorms struck the Dallas-Fort Worth area, while in Arkansas, suspected tornadoes damaged at least seven homes there. The powerful storm system stretches from the central plains to the upper Midwest, affecting more than 57 million people. Adriana Diaz has more on that. Holy in between strikes of lightning, it was impossible to miss the tornadic storms that barreled through northern Texas. The powerful system produced a torrential hailstorm in Plano. Oh my God! Hailstones the size of golf balls battered thousands of homes. This fell in about one minute. Never seen anything like it in my life. Look at the water is coming up toward the house. Oh my gosh. Pounding rain and winds topping 45 miles per hour knocked out power to more than 5,000 people. The same system is dumping snow from the Rockies to the Great Lakes. There were blizzard conditions in Colorado where some places saw more than 20 inches on Wednesday. The slick roads led to spinouts like this one in Denver. Hundreds of cars and trucks faced whiteout conditions and traffic that had some drivers stuck for hours. Denver International Airport was forced to shut down for only the third time in its history. More than 1,300 flights were canceled. At one point, close to 300,000 people there lost power. The storm stretches all the way here to Wisconsin, where parts of the state could get up to a foot of snow. And if it doesn't melt by Sunday, it could be a white Easter, not Christmas. Adriana Diaz, CBS News, Green Bay, Wisconsin. In other news today, a wanted violent felon crashed in a van into a tree here in Des Moines after leading police on a short chase. Police say officers were do doing surveillance on a home where they believed wanted man Brian Palm was located. At about 10:15, he took off in a green van near East University. Police chased him for about five minutes when Palm hit a tree in the 900 block of Cleveland Avenue. He's a guy that we've been, been looking for for quite a while. He had uh, some pretty serious felony warrants on him. Uh, probation violation related to some prior auto thefts, uh, also some prior looting charges, which is no surprise here, and then uh, some burglary related charges. Palm received a head wound from the crash.
We're getting our first look inside a Chinese courtroom where a man has pleaded guilty to killing his girlfriend in Iowa City. Shang Nan Li guilt, pled guilty to murder during a day-long hearing yesterday. Li surrendered to police last May after returning to China following the slaying of 20-year-old Chinese national Xiao Tong. Her body was found stuffed into the trunk of her car in Iowa City in September of 2014. A judge will decide his punishment anywhere from 10 years in prison to the death penalty. The U.S. Census estimates that more than two-thirds of Iowa counties have lost population since 2010, but the counties near urban areas saw big growth. The census data just released today estimates 71 of Iowa's 99 counties lost residents, while 28 counties gained population. The largest percentage growth was 21.2 percent in neighboring Dallas County. That was followed by a 10 percent increase in Johnson County and 8.6 percent here in Polk County. Clinton County had the biggest population population drop, declining more than 1,300 residents. And speaking of dropping, gas prices jumped overnight to 209 a gallon. AAA says the increases are being driven by higher crude oil prices as well as seasonal demand and maintenance at refineries. Investigators in Belgium today looking for a second suspect in the Brussels subway bombing. They also say a nuclear power plant could have been a potential target. Kenneth Craig has the latest from Brussels. CBS News has learned the terror attacks were originally planned for Easter Monday, March 28th, but were moved up after police captured Paris terror suspect Salah Abdeslam in Brussels last week. Investigators are now hunting for a second suspect in the subway bombing. Belgian media published a sketch of a man who was seen speaking with suspect Khalid El Bakrawi at the station before he detonated a suicide bomb. Khalid's brother, Ibrahim, blew himself up at the airport. Both men have also been linked to a plan to target a nuclear power plant in Belgium. Many here in Brussels are pointing fingers at authorities for failing to prevent the attacks. Belgium's interior minister offered his resignation after Turkey revealed that one of the brothers was flagged as a terrorist. It was the worst day in my life. Journalist Kate Cardava was at the airport when the bombs went off and took photos in the immediate aftermath, including of Sebastian Bellin, who spoke to CBS News from his hospital bed. The gratitude is what I feel the most about how, how I made it. <laughs> For me, I think that it was very important to take pictures, these eight pictures, uh, to show everyone what was uh, uh, after two explosions. Kate says she heard from the brother of another victim. He said her photo gave him the welcome news that his sister was alive. Kenneth Craig, CBS News, Brussels. U.S. Attorney General Loretta Lynch says that the Department of Justice remains vigilant on national security following the terrorist attacks. During a news conference earlier today, Lynch said there has been no credible threat towards the United States in the days following the Brussels attack. Certainly, as we've seen here, the threat here in the homeland has been coming most recently from those individuals who are based here, who are inspired by, by terrorist or jihadist thinking online, ISIL or otherwise. Um, and so that's always a concern of ours, and certainly a concern would be whether or not they would be inspired by similar uh, attacks in Brussels or elsewhere. Lynch made the statement at a press conference at the Department of Justice before announcing charges against Iranians for cyber attacks here in the U.S. Officials in Iraq say Operation Conquest, the long-awaited campaign to take back the northern city of Mosul from ISIS terrorists, is underway. Officials say the Iraqi military effort is backed by U.S.-led coalition aircraft. Several villages east of Mosul have been reclaimed. It's not clear, though, how long the difficult operation will take. Several more bike bikers have been indicted for the 2015 Texas Twin Peaks restaurant shooting. That violent brawl last May between two rival biker gangs left nine people dead and several more injured. Investigators say an altercation in the bathroom seemed to have sparked the violence. More than 100 bikers already face charges and now arraignment dates will be set for 48 new cases. Police say the investigation is ongoing. And officials say a tugboat that collided with a construction barge north of New York City earlier this month, leaving three crew members dead, will be raised from the riverbed. The Coast Guard says a crane will raise the mangled 90-foot tugboat from the Hudson River sometime later today. That tugboat is sitting at about 40 feet below the surface near the bridge. Coming up next, we'll tell you how a little black cylinder could change the way we Alexa. view 
technology. Also, the niece of the late Martin Luther King brings a message of peace to Des Moines this morning. Those stories and more when your news at noon continues. Stay with us. This is Iowa's news leader. This is KCCI 8 News at Noon with Molly Cooney and meteorologist Jason Sudeiko. Cell phones and computers take up an increasing share of our time and attention. Now, new net technology could give our thumbs a rest, but at what cost? Brooke Silver Braga reports from New York. When Russell Sinclair has a question in the kitchen, he just shouts it out. Alexa, how many tablespoons in a cup? One cup equals 16 tablespoons. Alexa is the voice-controlled personal assistant inside the Amazon Echo. Today's forecast has clouds and showers. She can report the weather, play a song, even order a Domino's pizza. Amazon's standalone device competes with the voice assistants found inside many smartphones like Apple's Siri. 23 times 20 is 460. Yeah, I'd used Siri a bit before, but she wasn't really dependable. Alexa, to me, just really has the ability to do so much more. And how much does it cost? So it's $180. CNET's Ben Rubin says the Echo offers a hint at how we might soon navigate our homes. You are going to be talking to more of your appliances and your devices a lot more. That also raises privacy concerns. Last year, customers revolted when certain Samsung TVs were found to transmit personal conversations to a third party. Alexa, set a timer for 10 minutes. Amazon says the Echo's mic is only turned on when you say Alexa's name. Alexa. Even then, it can miss a beat. Play Back in Black by ACDC. And sometimes she doesn't understand. She's not perfect. She's not perfect, but she's getting better every day. Uh, I think when Did I asked... Did you ask want me to order better, better? No, thank you, Alexa. Brooke Silva Braga. All right. For CBS News. And to extend Echo's range, Amazon now is selling satellite units to place around your home and a small portable speaker with Alexa that you can take on the go. It was a packed house this morning for the annual Iowa Prayer Breakfast at the Iowa Events Center. Let's give God one more standing ovation. Come on. The crowd of more than 1,000 rose to their feet several times during the event. Dr. Alveda King, niece of Martin Luther King Dr. Jr., delivered the keynote message. Now the breakfast brought together community leaders to pray for direction in decision making. Ask God to reveal to you how you can use the gifts that God has given you to stir up and to occupy. Governor Terry Branstad also delivered remarks. Did you hear this earlier this morning? The statewide tornado drill was held to test out the sirens, the school's severe weather plans, and National Weather Service alerts. The annual test is all part of Severe Weather Awareness Week, which, by the way, is going on right now. But we hope no severe weather is headed our way. We've had enough snow. So, Jason, what's next? Well, we're going to see a warm up. We've got warming temperatures, clearing skies. So the cold that we've got out there right now will be a thing of the past soon. A quick look at Sioux City where they saw that 17 inches of winter out there. You can see down the main drag, not really going anywhere for anybody. Cars kind of careened off into the side there. But thankfully, a lot of us just saw rain. Some of those totals not exactly impressive, but they were getting up there. Nearly an inch for Waterloo, half inch down there for Lamoni, and roughly a third of an inch here in the metro. So look out there right now, kind of dreary, a little chilly. 33 is the actual air temperature, but with that wind out of the north, now it's feeling a little bit cooler at 23 degrees. This whole system shifting eastward. You can see storms down from Chicago to around Indianapolis and that band of snow, Green Bay, all the way up into Canada. So this cloud line will eventually push eastward too, and that'll make for a pretty clear and calm evening for us. But we're going to start the day off chilly tomorrow because of that as well. Temperatures drop to 26 degrees by 7 o'clock in the morning. But feels like temperatures throughout the day not exactly going to be warm. Low to mid 20s. Clouds do clear by that 10 p.m. time frame. And that is going to make for very sunny skies tomorrow. And this wind that we've got, that's eventually going to be pushing east too. We're on the back side of the system here. And you can see these little black lines there. The tighter those are together, the windier your conditions are going to be. And that relaxes as this moves eastward 
and then we bring in an area high pressure to help out with the sunshine and reorient those winds to out of the southwest. So all good things if you like spring-like weather and not the wintry weather that a lot of us had. This continues eastward. Futurecast clears us out through the overnight and keeps us clear through most of the day on Friday. And a few clouds will roll in into Saturday. Chances for a few light showers throughout the uh, early morning hours. And it does try to bring in just a few isolated snow showers to the northwestern edge of the state. But besides that, it is not looking bad as we head into the weekend. Just a chilly day out there today. 37 degrees is your high temperature. That breeze out of the northwest at 15 to 25, that'll be relaxing. Uh, definitely feeling like it out there as we have wind chills in the low to mid-20s. Highs today only in the mid-30s. Should be in the low 50s for this time of year. Tonight, temperatures back down into the middle 20s. And we do clear out the skies and lighten up the winds. But you look over the next few days here, uh, we get right back to average. 52 on Friday with sunshine. And you can see that bunny hopping around. He's all happy at 49 degrees. And Saturday, we've got that chance for rain. But after that, skies clear out Monday and Tuesday. And we bring in temperatures into the 60s. And those are going to stick around through Wednesday next week. So we had a little bout with winter, but <laughs> spring is fighting back full force. I think the bunny's helping us out. Okay, I think so too. 